What's up YouTube? So today in this video I'm gonna cover how to set up the operation system of your retro arcade machine console whatever it is that you're setting up. Now this is assuming that you have all the parts together guys so you've already got your Raspberry Pi 3 or zero, Raspberry Pi whatever um, or your Odroid XU4 with the power supply, the all important micro SD card, which is what we flash the operation system onto uh, using this software. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do, you're going to need, well, a bit of hardware so you can get a micro SD USB adapter. So you'll need to plug your micro SD card into this adapter and then plug it into your PC. And there's loads of them, they're all over the place. Gearbest is super cheap if you don't mind waiting for it to come from China. £1.75. And so you plug the USB bit into your PC. Uh, and then you can you see at the top here, you can plug your uh, micro SD card into it. You don't need this other stuff. So you plug your micro SD, plug it into your PC. And with that, you can start flashing the OS for the card. Now, the re the, when you see all these pretty retro consoles and all these pictures of everything of emulation station and all that, it's actually all down to something called RetroPie. Now, if you do a Google search for RetroPie, you actually get the RetroPie website. So these guys have worked so hard combining emulation station, retro arcade, and this is all incorporated in RetroPie. So the first thing you want to do is you want to download this. So you click the download button and then you choose uh, which version you want. So whichever Raspberry Pi you've got, whether it's one, two, three, or zero. So I've got a Raspberry Pi three, so I would probably down, I'm gonna download this one. So I'm just gonna keep that downloaded in the background. If you have an Odroid, you're gonna need the Odroid operation system. So this is actually under Retro Arena. So this is actually, o it's called Odroid Retro Arena. Now shout out to these guys as well, because they ported the original Retro Pi for the Raspberry Pi over to the Odroid and it's now as sleek it works really well and again without these guys we wouldn't have been able to you know use this interface on the Odroid so for the Odroid one you, you scroll down a little bit you click download you scroll down a little bit and you want the latest version as of today is 1.5.2 which is based on the RetroPie 4.4.2 ported over so you click download there so now you'll see them two downloading in the background and then what you want to do is when they finish, you click this and then show in folder. Now, if you're really lazy and you want something that's got all the ROMs on it, it's all singing, all dancing, you don't have to do any manual configuration. There's an amazing website called Arcade Punks. Now, these guys have created a community of people who like to play games, that's play retro games. And there's also other people who have made their own images, which is very important for this video and for you guys. So now this website's changed a lot since I last came on. Uh, there's actually a lot of different menus you can go on, but I'm guessing it's front end downloads and you can download an entire image. So if you've got a 128 gig card, you can download a 128 gig image. It's been set up. It's got all the ROMs on ready for you to go. And I'm gonna try and find one for Odroid images. So I click on Odroid images. So let's say I've got a 128 gigabyte card. When you click on Odroid images, it might not show anything here. That's because it's 2019. So there's not actually been anything uploaded for Odroid this year. We'll have to go to the 2018 archives. I'm, I know there's definitely stuff in here because I've uh, I've used these guys before to test them. Uh, yep, so there's a bunch here. So if you've got a 256 gigabyte card, you can get this. Um, there's no 128 gigabyte images that I can see. I thought there was. But yeah, oh no, those are the top there, Pi Piggies, yeah. So, you know, shout out to, obviously, Arcade Punks for hosting all these images. And also, please show your love to the image creators like Pi Piggies, Regulad, um, Virtual Man, he's a good one, Wolf and Oz, uh, Bato Sira. Uh, he's a great one as well. Now, because these images are quite big, you're going to have to get these using different methods. So you can't just download. You'll have to get it through a torrent or you've got to use Mega NZ or Google Drive. I can cover that in another video if need be, but you need to download that image so you have the .img file uh, ready to flash. So once we've got all that together, um, you're going to have to make sure that you have some software to flash it on with, okay? So now this is where I recommend 
a piece of software called Balina Etcher, okay? So it's basketball, apple, lemon, elephant, November, asparagus, okay? Sorry, I don't know my phonetic alphabet. So that's Balina Etcher, okay? So if you type in there and then click on balina.io forward slash etcher, okay? So you'll have to download this as well. And another shout out to these guys for making some great software. You have to remember that every single step of this, a lot of people have put a lot of effort into making this process as easy as possible. There is other softwares out there, but this is very clean. It's very simple to use. It's got a few extra features like validation of your image. So there's all kinds of stuff. So you select your OS. Uh, I've got Windows 64, Windows 64 bit. So um, I'll click that. If you're not too sure, you can click start, do a DX Diag, but it actually automatically detects your OS. So yeah, then you'll have this downloaded as well. Again, similar to WinSCP, this is a very small file. It's only 68.8 megabytes as of today. So, um, you know, it, this will probably be the first thing that finishes downloading once once you've downloaded it, everything. So yeah, when that finishes, I'll skip the video ahead until everything's downloaded and we'll do the install. Okay, guys, so... Uh, my Bellana Etcher has finished um, downloading. So now I'm going to go ahead and install uh, the Bellana Etcher setup tool. Now, just a reminder, you don't need every single one of the images that I mentioned. Uh, you only need one. So if you've got a RetroPie, you can either choose the Arcade Punks fully done version or the non-fully done version. And instead of getting the 128 gigabyte torrent, I've just got my own image that I made. But you would flash this in exactly the same way. So, but first of all, you need to install the tool that will enable you to flash the image onto your micro SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. So double click it, open it, right click and run as administrator, however you want to do it. Make sure you read the terms and conditions and then just click I agree. And then that should pretty much automatically install everything for you. There shouldn't be any more options needed here. It'll just automatically install on your PC. And then you'll have a screen that looks a little bit like this. Now, this is where you select the image that goes onto your card. So I'm going to plug in my USB to micro SD adapter. So this is my micro SD card here. It's appeared in Drive G. It's already actually got an image on it. That's why it's called boot. But I'm just going to flash over the top of this. So the first thing you do is you click select image. And then you just go to wherever your downloaded image is. And then you just select which image you've got. Now, some tools won't let you use the .gz file because this is .gz means it's actually a .image file, but it's been compressed in to take up less space. But Balan Etcher will still detect that and flash it anyway. So uh, you can choose whichever one you want. I'm going to go ahead and choose my custom image from my old droid, but you can choose the custom image from Arcade Punks that you downloaded. Obviously, if you've got an old droid, use an old droid image from Arcade Punks. If you've got a RetroPie image, use a RetroPie image. Or you can just use the image from the RetroPie website and have a an image that you can build up by yourself. Next thing you do is to do select drive. Now, some S micro SD cards are not big enough uh, for the images. And what I mean by that is, like I have a Samsung uh, micro SD card and that's actually 128.04 gigabytes some micro SD cards will be slightly smaller so if your image uh, shows up as 128.04 but your micro SD card is an integral one which is slightly smaller this isn't going to work so you might have to you know get a 64 bit image and then flash that on but it will actually warn you about that when you click continue so I'll click continue and then if you click flash it'll come up with this error now, this, all this is saying is you've got quite a big card in here, 128 gigabytes. Just double check that it is the micro SD card that you want to flash it to, you know, just in case you've selected an SSD or something like that. And then if you realize that it is the wrong one, you click change. If not, you click continue. So I'm just going to go ahead and click continue on that because I know this is the right one. So I click continue and then it'll start the flash. There are other options as well. So if you didn't want to ver validate it on the end, which takes another, well, it takes double the time to validate it because it'll flash it and then it'll validate it. You can untick that option. Uh, obviously, I unticked anonymously report errors as well. I feel like they probably have enough report errors without, they don't really need mine. But yeah, I leave eject on success done. So it'll automatically eject from your PC. But yeah, once you've decided those options, you can just click go. 
Now, uh, instead of flashing it again, I've actually already flashed this card with this image, so um, I'm not going to do that. But you click flash, and then it'll show a prompt at the end saying it's completed. And then once that's completed, you can then take your card out of your PC. So you don't need to do this, but I'm just going to safely eject my card. So just again, guys, I've already flashed this card, so I don't need to do this again. And I'm going to put this into my... Uh, is this an Android? I think this is an Android image, so I'm going to put it into my Android. And I'll switch to that screen just to show you what's going on. Now, one thing that you need to be aware of is when you flash a new image, sometimes, depending on who uploaded the image and how they uploaded it, it might not do anything. So I've got my capture card showing here. Um, and I've just turned it on. It's not actually doing anything. That's because the first time you boot up your SD card into your Raspberry Pi or Droid, it sometimes expands itself. And this can take a couple of minutes. So uh, there's a little green light which has been blinking away and that's actually stopped. So it, and it usually takes a couple of minutes. Then once it's done that, you power it off and then you don't do anything. You leave, you leave the micro SD in your old Droid or Raspberry Pi and then just power it back on again. So I'm just going to wait for this to boot up. Bear in mind that I've already plugged in uh, a couple of controllers to my Odroid. So you just plug into any USB controllers into your Raspberry Pi or Odroid. And then when you boot it up, you should get a prompt. And it'll say, gamepads detected. And you need to basically input your control pad uh, in controllers so that the emulation station will understand uh, what's going on. So you'll get a prompt that looks like this. Okay, so... It's detected my two control pads. I'm just going to hold any button on one of my control pads and then configure it. So this is a SNES Buffalo Classic USB gamepad. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, so just D-pad up, down, left, right. Start, select. Uh, with this controller, uh, A is A, B is B, X is X, and Y is Y. If you use an Xbox controller, guys, just remember that you need to invert A and B. So B is A and A is B, and X and Y. You invert them two as well. Uh, but I don't need to because this is a SNES controller. Uh, left shoulder, right shoulder, and then I don't have any of these buttons. I don't have any triggers. So you just hold any button that you've already configured and you can skip through all these not defines. Uh, when you get to the end, you'll get something that says hotkey or something. I think it's like hotkey or uh, enable hotkey perhaps. Now, if you don't enable a hotkey, the way to exit your emulator is to hold start and press select at the same time, which I like. So I'm not going to enable a hotkey here. So when you get to the bottom, you click whatever you've mapped to A, and then it says, you've not enabled a hotkey. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to click yes to that because I'm okay not having a hotkey because I like using the start and select option. So you click that, wait a couple of seconds. It'll, it'll add the controller config into the retro arch, and then uh, you should be able to control it. So this is my custom image, similar to the one that you got from Arcade Punks. So the good thing about having a custom image is you'll find that a lot of them are already got everything scraped. So if I go into Sega CD, for example, um, it's got all the descriptions, mostly. It's got um, the uh, images and stuff like that. So you can see so much more information about the game instead of it just being a list of uh, games. Uh, and if you use the L and R key, you can skip down. So you can skip chunks of it if you use L and R. Once you're happy with everything, uh, following this, you're probably going to want to scrape your ROMs and put maybe your own artwork on it or, you know, add details and things like that. I actually spent quite a lot of time. If you look, there's 2,249 arcade games on this and that actually every single one of these is completely scraped. You've got the BIOSes at the bottom, so they're not actually games that you launch, but every single other thing on here is fully scraped. I've even renamed some of them, so I've renamed... So yeah, if you look, TMNT Arcade, I've separated those and put the two-player and four-player versions and given them separate names. So it literally has every single arcade game that I could find out there, The Simpsons as well, uh, with the correct BIOSes. So these all launch. If you hover over it, uh, it'll show a preview. So, you know, I've spent a lot of time doing that, and I'll show you how to do that in, in another video. And... That's pretty much it, guys. So you've already your console's ready to go, uh, and all you have to do is is just launch a game. Um, just go, press start, go down to quit, and then shut down system or restart system or whatever it is that you want to do. So that 
to me was pretty successful. Uh, so I'm just going to shut that down. And then it will shut down my console. So yeah, one final note I just want to say. If you do flash a .gz file, try extracting it first. Because it sometimes can be a little bit hit and miss. And it might take a couple of boots to uh, get working. So what, the way you can do that is if you right click uh, 7-zip. or Well, I download 7-zip. But you can basically just extract here. And then flash the .img file. Uh, instead of the GZ file, only if you've been having problems. The three main steps to be aware of on your PC, download Balena Etcher, boom. Download an image that you need for your device, boom. Flash the image onto your device, boom, boom, boom. And then uh, boot up your device, you're all good. Thank you for choosing my video for this demonstration. If you have any questions, please drop something in the comments. My channel's not very popular, so you'll probably get a pretty swift answer. Yeah, so thanks again, guys. Take it easy.